I release it into your world, into your life. Even upon children, upon young people. God loves to pour his spirit upon young people, teenagers, youth. If you're a young person, if you're a teenager, lift up your hands and tell him, fill me with the seven spirits of God. Single me out in my generation because this will single you out. It will make you, a, it will, you will become an exceptional child. In the name of Jesus. And of course, there is a cluster that goes together on this side. Everything from my innovation to invention to creativity to envisioning the future all the way to revelation, seeing the future. Whether it's as a gift of foresight or gift of revelation that actually sees the future, they are all there. Those are the special gifts that every prophet must have. Those are the gifts that make prophets prophet. Those are also the gifts that make business people, political leaders that have them unique. Solomon just asked God for wisdom. God gave him those three. He gave him knowledge, he gave him understanding, and he gave him wisdom. Plus the fact that kings normally will ask for spirit of might. Those things singled Solomon out. He differentiated him be, 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 you know, from other kings of his own time and even after him. Let me show you one or two persons that operated in that. The spirit of knowledge, spirit of understanding, spirit of wisdom. You see the kind of things he did in their life. Exodus chapter 31. There's a man called Basriel. I'm going to read from verse 4. This is an inventor. This is a craftsperson. He was into vocational skills. He was into construction. He was into fashion. This guy went into a lot because he built and designed the whole tabernacle of Moses. There were areas where you work on jewelries. There were areas where you work on metal, brass. There were areas where you construct. There were areas where you work on wood. There were areas where you work on fabrics and clothing and all that. There were areas where you had to make garments for the high priest. This guy was into fashion, he was into construction, he was into jewelry, he was into design, he was into artistry, and he was the seven, spir the seven spirits of God that enabled him to do that. He didn't have all the seven, he just had these three. See, I have called by name Basri, the son of Uri, the son of all, of the tribe of Judah. <laughs> Verse 3. I have filled him with the spirit of the Lord, you see, he had the spirit of the Lord first. Then he had, and in wisdom, he had the spirit of wisdom. And in understanding, he had the spirit of understanding. And in knowledge, you see, four of those lamps burning in one man. Four. I told you about Solomon. He had this three. He had the spirit of knowledge. I wish I can take you there. But well, our time is, you know, running out. He had the spirit of understanding. Solomon, he had the spirit of wisdom. And he had the spirit of might. A king normally will have that. Because of wars. I can tell you that Solomon had much more than that. I also saw in his life that there was the spirit of counsel. Yes. At that time, those two women came. You know. They slept and the baby died. So all the kings of Ed were coming to him for counsel, for, for consulting. They would bring savers and go from every nation to solve national problems. He became a, a government consultant. You, you're into consulting, you need this. Political consulting, government consulting, business consulting, marriage consultant ministry consultant you need this spirit of wisdom the spirit of knowledge and the spirit of understanding so he said i have filled him. anytime you see this word for now you are reading the bible and god said i have filled somebody with he's talking about the seven spirits of god count and see what he filled the person with this is not the knowledge you go to acquire from school. This is an anointing that comes upon a person. And of course, as you study and open and read, it opens your eyes to see what other people don't see. You go sit down in a class, you, you end up knowing things that your fellow classmates don't know. You come out there, distinguished, like Daniel. Daniel became 10 times better than all his classmates. It's because of this, this three cluster. 
the spirit of knowledge, understanding, and wisdom. They were on Daniel. They were also in the life of Joseph. All those dream, people that can interpret dreams and people that have capacity to see the future, to innovate, to pray, the, this is what is functioning in them. Sometimes it might be one, sometimes it could be all of them. All the three. I have filled them with the spirit of God in wisdom, in understanding and in knowledge and in all manner of workmanship. Anything that has to do with technology, anything that has to do with innovation and creativity, anything that has to do with designs, making movies, writing music, designing fashion, designing beauty, constructing it. Not just to design it, but to build it. Anything that has to do with inventing. And it has to do with the innovation. Ladies and gentlemen, it doesn't matter. That's why the Lord asked me to come. A lot of you in the marketplace that are doctors and pharmacists, God said he's going to release something. You will find cures to all of these diseases and plagues and viruses coming out in these last days. Some of you that are biologists, uh, or biochemists, some of you that are into biotechs, there are a lot of things that God is going to release to you. Solutions to problems. Those of you that are businessmen, he's going to show you new business models, new areas of investment, and he's going to put billions in your hands so you can finance the gospel and so you can also do a lot of good works. God wants his name glorified and he's looking for men. He's just looking for vessels to pour himself on. Are you ready, my friends? Lord, we wait on you. Verse 4 said, it's not just Basrael. It said to devise cunning works, to work in gold, to work in silver, to work in brass. I told you he works in all kinds of wood, even clothes. Wouldn't you like to have versatile ability, vocational skills of all types? These days we're living in, it's not theoretical education that will get you anywhere. Is what you're able to deliver. What solution? What value are you bringing to the table? Ladies and gentlemen, these are those days we are here. That's why we are coming to you. You know, the word of God comes first, then God starts confirming it. God starts confirming. Once people get knowledge, then God can walk. You know, to devise cunning works in gold, in silver, in brass, verse 5, Basariel, and in cutting of stones in setting them, in carving of timber, it's even wood, construction, to work in all manner of workmanship, anything that is technology, anything that is technical, anything that is all that, God is the seven spirits of God amongst. And remember, these seven spirits of God are also needed in leadership to develop policies, develop programs, to come out, you know, to lead organizations, to come out with strategies. This is what you need, my friend to come out with new products and services that will take your business and your industry to the next level. And then verse 6. And behold, I have given him Aholiab, the son of Abishamath, and of the, of the tribe of Dan. He, he gave him an assistant, and he filled the guy, Aholiab, with the same anointing. And then in the hearts of all that are wise-hearted, I have put wisdom, that they may make all that I have commanded you. So, there is Basari, Aholiab, his assistant. And then God raised an army of people carrying this anointing so that they can come behind them to construct the tabernacle. Ladies and gentlemen, lift up your hands. I'm sent to bring this word to you. See? You're going, your life is going to change. After this broadcast, you will start noticing different new, new capacities in you. Lift up your hands. If you want to stretch it towards me, stretch it. I release by the power of the Holy Ghost the, a new outpouring of the Holy Spirit in your life. The release of these special anointings in media, in technology, in all kinds of sciences, in arts, in leadership, in business, in politics, in governance, in ministry. We release it upon your life in the name of Jesus. Wonderful Holy Spirit, this is your desire. Let your glory fall upon men and women all over the world. Equip them with what it takes for the next level in life and ministry. Let no man be the same that have heard the sound of our voice. Lord, fill them and now open their eyes and teach them and coach them on how to maximize these new capacities to be a blessing to their world. In Jesus, glorify your name through all of these lives. In Jesus' mighty name. 
If you notice, many of these people that I'm showing you, and I deliberately chose people that are not necessarily in ministry, are people that are not necessarily in the five-fold ministry, but they are ministers. They are marketplace. Daniel was in government. Solomon was a politician or king. And Joseph was in economy and so on and so forth. Yet God filled them with the spirit. It's not just for pastors. It's not just for preachers. It's for all of God's children. Remember he said to bring every believer to the fullness of the stature of Christ. And Christ had the fullness. He had the seven eyes. You and I are meant to have them. Basri only had just four of the candles. And this man did wonders. That tabernacle of Moses he built was one of the wonders of the ancient world. And you know, another man by the name of Huram, many years ago, when he was trying to build Solomon's temple, his name was Huram, H-U-R-U-M. You can check him out in your Bible in the book of Kings. God also gave him the same thing he gave Basarim. And that was the guy that led the construction of Solomon's temple. One of the wonders of the ancient world. All of the wonders that he created there, that boy. And God gave him a team of army of Jews that work with him to do that. It's your turn. You are into construction. You are an architect. You work in metals and all that. You are a designer. It's your turn. You are into creative work. It's your turn. You are a leader. It's your time. You are a businessman. This is what you need. You know when you go for training and get your professional skills, and now add the anointing on it. There is nobody that can see your back. You'll be 10 times better than your colleagues in the industry. God sent me to wake you up. And he said, as you look at the problems in the society, like in Africa, the hope of Africa is the emergence of Joseph's and Daniel's carrying the seven spirits of God. Marketplace professionals, doctors, all kinds of professionals working in these things. After you know the ones they've taught you in school, in medicine, then the Holy Spirit will now show you some extra. How to mix this and this to create something that cures something. That preserves people's life. Many breakthroughs are going to occur in different fields of endeavor. Get ready. The time has come. <laughs> I wish I can show you more. But Daniel chapter 1, Daniel chapter 1 in verse 8, Daniel proposing his heart not to defy himself. So I'm going to be giving now keys. I will share a few keys to tapping into this thing. One of them is consecration. In verse 8, Daniel proposing his heart not to defy himself with what is going on in Israel. Make a decision not to defy yourself with sexual immorality, with all kinds of things, with alcohol, cigarettes, all the, keep your body holy. When Daniel meant that, because remember, God needs a vessel, but your body is that vessel. Keep it pure. Present your body as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God. When Daniel did that, with his three friends, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, read verse 12. He said to the Enoch, prove your servant 10 days, Let, give us pause. And then they started learning how to fast, you know, a small, small fast. Look at verse 17. Okay, as for these four children, Daniel, Mish, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, just four of them. Remember, hundreds of Jews came from Israel. The rest were normal. Just like many Christians are walking normally now. Hundreds of Jews came, but this one God distinguished. Consecration, a life of prayer and fasting. They were also very studious people. They studied, they went for training, they went to the best training that Babylon could offer. Get yourself trained, go for courses, go for, read, study. But then be a man of consecration and a man of prayer and learn to fast at least once a week. And there should be seasons where you do longer than that. Three days, seven days, you know. I don't mean dry, drink water. You can be breaking in the evening. You become a candidate for these things. As for these four children, God gave them knowledge and skill in all learning. So you see that? Whenever you say God gave somebody something, he didn't go to acquire it. God gave it. You know it's those seven spirits he poured forth on them. God gave them knowledge. His spirit of knowledge was their skill in all learning. That's understanding. There's nothing you teach them they don't understand. And wisdom. And Daniel had understanding in all visions. And it doesn't matter what vision, he will interpret it. He knows because these things were operating in him. And verse 18. 
at the end of the days when the king has said that he should bring them in. Then the prince of the Enoch brought them in before the king. You see, they were trying to select people to work in public service in government house, verse 19. And the king communed with them. This time to test and give them an exam. Ask them hard questions. Try to see if they will solve it. Among them was none found like Daniel, Hanel, Michel, Azariah. Why is it that he's the one that did the consecration that are distinguished? Why is it that he's the one that developed a prayer life that are distinguished? Why is it that he's the ones that are fasting that are distinguished? Ladies and gentlemen, learn the secret there. You want the Daniel anointing? Here is the secret. They are, and they stood before the king. They got appointed in government. And verse 20, the Bible said, Daniel... In all matters of wisdom and understanding. Are you seeing that? That the king inquired of them. He found them to be ten times better than all the magicians, astrologers that were his realm. And if you, if you read further, Daniel continued to be in government, survived four or five different administrations, continued till the time of Cyrus. He remained in power till he was old, very old. His 70 years of captivity finished. He was still in power in the days of Cyrus. The rest of the Jews were going back. He didn't go back with them. He helped to organize the, uh, the return of the Jews. But he was here, prime minister. So he stayed, making sure they have the money, the resources, the political backup that they need to go and rebuild Jerusalem. This is that man. Every administration that comes up needs him. I pray for you that that's what he's going to do. That spirit of wisdom, the spirit of excellence, the spirit of distinction will come upon you. In the name of Jesus, singling you out in your career, in your field, you'll be 10 times better than normal people in your industry, than even believers that are not working in the things of God. You will also be 10 times better than them. Those ones that will not work in the things of God, they, you will be 10 times better than them, and the name of the Lord will be glorified in your life. Glory, glory be to the name of the Lord. Glory be to his name. Let me begin to wind up because I've dealt with it. There's so much to show you, you know. If you go to Daniel chapter 5, verse 11, there is a man in your kingdom. This is the queen, the queen mother talking. The king, you know, the queen mother is the one talking. He's recommending Daniel to a new king. A new king just came to power after Nebuchadnezzar. He said, there is a man in your kingdom in whom is the spirit of the holy gods. In the days of your father, that's the days of Nebuchadnezzar, light and understanding and wisdom, like the wisdom of the gods was found in him. Do you see what the seven spirits of God gives you? Wisdom, like the wisdom of the gods. Light and understanding. Whom the king Nebuchadnezzar, your father, made master of magicians, astrologers, Chaldeans, and soothsayers. You have occult people working in your industry. It's not an issue. Don't fear them. Get the seven spirits of God. You will be in charge of all of them. You will be the one governing all of them. And many of them will even come to Christ because of you. So don't come and say, ah, I'm in government. A lot of people are in different occults. I'm frightened. No, Daniel was not. Magicians are small boys. When you play in these games, I'm teaching you. These boys are small boys. You are now swimming in the deep because you are playing the realm of God. You are dealing with the spirit of God that made the demons and made the devils. And you can cripple their operations. <laughs> that one Daniel brought down the prince of, the, of Pesha with his prayers and brought about a change of government and the collapse of an empire and the emergence of a new empire. We'll talk about that another day. And of course, verse 12. For as much as an excellent spirit and knowledge and understanding and interpretation of dreams and showing of hard sentences and dissolving of doubts we have found in the same Daniel. I want to read it again. As much as an excellent spirit of knowledge, of understanding and of interpretation of dreams and of showing of hard sentences and of dissolving of doubts was found in the same Daniel. My God, my God, my God, my God. No matter how hard, they will, it, because that's the spirit that gives innovation, that gives invention, that enables you to see. No matter how that equation is, you will find the solution. 
It helps you in your academics. It helps you in your career. It helps you in business. It helps you in leadership. It helps you in, in running a family. It helps you in ministry. May the Lord release this seven fire upon your life, upon your soul. May he release it in your life that it will start burning in you. It will guide you. It will lead you into exploits like no man has ever known. It will distinguish you in your field. In the name of Jesus, may you emerge one of the end time army of God, one of those men that will bring glory to the name of the Lord and through your life, millions will come to the seven knowledge of Christ. People in your industry, people in your community, May God bless you with resources, bless you with wealth, so you can finance his kingdom and help a lot of people that are hurting and dying in Jesus' mighty name. Ladies and gentlemen, join me because sacrifice is one of the keys to this thing. If you notice Solomon's son, he wasn't prayer and fasting. He just went to Mount Gibbon and burnt a thousand sacrifices. That night the Lord said, ask me what I will give you. And he gave him the spirit of knowledge, the spirit of understanding, and the spirit of wisdom. That night, there are some things you offer on the altar. God will not wait for one week. He won't wait for two days. He won't wait for 24 hours. That day, he will show up. Because nothing attracts God like sacrifice. One of the things I'm going to ask you to do is to join me in partnership for us to develop this media ministry to reach the whole world. There are all kinds of networks we are going on. During the week of coming, we use multiple networks. Join me. Write me. Tell me. I'm going to be one of your partners. I'm going to be one of your covenant partners. And I'll be standing with you in prayer and, you know, in financial backing for us to do this. You tell me what your monthly commitment will be. Or if it's one-time commitment every year, let's team up. Partnership solves all problems. Join us in this. Let's do it. Let's reach North America. Let's reach Europe. Let's reach everywhere. Because God has given us something that the world needs. Rich resources for the body of Christ. And, you know, we are just starting. We are just starting. We are just scratching, you know, the surface. Glory be to the name of the Lord. Next time I come, we're going to be discussing other dimension. You know, there is, are two prophets written about in the book of Revelation chapter 11. Zechariah chapter 4 talks about them. He calls them the two anointed ones that stand before the Lord of hosts. And the book of Revelation 11 said they are prophets. They are actually men. What level of anointing did they operate in? Number one, they had prophetic preaching. When they are talking, they are sharing the word. There is so much revelation flowing through them. Number two, they had revelation gifts. They can see what is coming. Just like a normal prophet have revelation gifts. Word of wisdom, word of knowledge. What of descending of spirits. Number three, they had miracles give healing and miracle walking power. They can heal the sick. They can, you know, miracles happen through their life. Number four, they had power over the forces of nature. They can stop rainfall. They can call fire down. They can turn water to blood. They can turn water to wine. They had power over the forces of nature, just like God Almighty has. They can speak to the elements and things we. And there, somebody that operated in that like Moses would take sand, throw it up, it would turn to flies. That's creating like God. It's part of what the seven spirit of God does. Now listen, for those of you that are in ministry, you have to get ready for that level of anointing to come upon you. And it's not just that they have power over, they have power over death. You can't kill them. You can't shoot them. You can't cut them. They are giving protection that bullet and all of this is not able to kill. The poison can't kill them. And the Bible says when there are days of prophecy and ministry, they are going to be ministering when the Antichrist will be here. They are going to be ministering in the last days, in the middle of the tribulation. Those of us that are going to be ministering in these tough days of Ebola, of Corona, of all kinds of end time crisis, they are special anointing for last days ministry. And you can't kill them. The things that normally would take out other people, they keep going. He said, when their days of ministry completes, then the beast, the Antichrist, will slay them. And their bodies will lie in the streets. And people will be happy, bad people, wicked people, because now these people that are disturbing them are dead. But he said, three and a half days. 
prayer and half day. God just added extra day, half day, to separate it for Jesus. They rise up from the dead and ascend to heaven. These guys will have the ability to defeat death, come back, and then end up, you know, going on personal raptures. They also had other things functioning in them. They had ability to do time travel. To trans, you know, travel. Sometimes without visa, sometimes they get to a country they need to get to. Philip, it happened to Philip in the Acts of Apostle. Philip finished preaching in the desert. The Holy Spirit carried them. Elijah used to do that in the early, early days. It's still available, my friend. Get ready. This last day. Next time we're going to be talking about some of this special anointing for the last day's move of God. Next Sunday, 8 a.m. I'm going to be coming back your way and we're going to go deeper because I'm just starting this and my time is off. And you know one of the amazing things about these prophets, they do this time travel, sometimes in the body or out of the body. You remember Elisha? Gehazi went to collect bribe for Naaman. Elisha said, didn't my spirit go with you? His body was sitting on the tree, but he followed him. And he saw everything that happened. They are listening to all the conversations. When the guy came, he wanted to lie. He described, so you will have these new capacities. Hear things that are discussing something in the government house, you'll be listening to it here. You sometimes you, you you are out of your body, you go see what is going on in a certain place and come back. Other times, God will take you with your body. And I'm not talking about these things are happening already. God transports you out in a place. Some people are going to travel in these last days without visa. You know, some of the time will come, they will say, if you don't get a mark, you can't go here. Who told you? As they are planning their own, God is stepping up. God is stepping things up. They have power to call famine. They also have power to change the economy of a nation with just a pronouncement. There are men that have functioned in this level like Jesus. He can speak to storm. He can turn water to wine. He can feed 5,000 with only two, two, two loaves. Miracle walking power. Elijah functioning that he could call fire down from heaven. There were many things. Even in his, his protege that he handed over Elijah one time fed many people with a handful of food. He would drop axe. Uh, people were cutting trees and the axe fell into the water. He asked for a piece of wood. He dropped it. The axe started floating. We're going to see things, my friend. I'm talking about miracles. I'm talking about signs and wonders. Moses functioned in that realm. Enoch functioned in that realm. It's your turn. It's your turn. When I studied Enoch, I saw that he structured his ministry in such a way that when he started, at the time, he gave birth to his son. He lived to be 365 years. When he turned 65, he began to walk with God. He began to move into extra levels of consecration. So ministers that are running around will not be able to carry the kind of anointing I'm talking about. You have to protect your secret place. What Enoch used to do is that once in three days he will come out to minister to people. Three days he's in the presence of God. If you read about these two anointed ones, they said they are the two anointed ones that stand before the Lord of hosts. These are men that spend a lot of time in the presence of God. They carry God when they show up. Enoch could be three days in the secret place. He will come out and minister one day and withdraw again. Towards the weekend, they will come out again. So when is there and weekend? And after a while, Enoch withdrew to the level that he only shows up once a week. It got to a point that Enoch got to the point that is now once a month. But when he comes out once a month, things will happen more than people that are running up and down preach. Are you guys seeing what it would take? You read the book of Joshua, you will see what I'm telling you. The Bible recommends the book twice. That's why I'm recommending it. I'm not the one recommending it. The Bible recommends it two times. Yes. Read it, you see what I'm telling you. So the Bible says whenever he comes out, there is something on him. The similitude of God like Moses was on him. People were afraid of him. And he reached his generation. And Enoch ministered just before Noah's flood. You and I that are ministering in these last days must get into this Enoch consecration. We become, become men that stand before the Lord and you become olive trees. Like Moses that will spend sometimes 40 days with God. When he comes, his face will be shining. Like Elijah. Like Jesus. Then you will walk in that realm of power. 
Glory be to the name of the Lord. God Almighty bless you and keep you and draw you into these depths of glory and make you a manifestation and a wonder to your world. And I bless you that the seven spirits of God will come on your life and then lead you on a journey, an adventure that will be a blessing to your generation. May the solution to the problems in your community, in your city, in your nation, may God reveal it to you and put it on your table that your life and ministry, your business, your career will go to another level. May he bless you with the spirit of the fear of the Lord that in the midst of all this, you'll be a godly man, a person of righteousness and integrity and holiness manifesting the nature of God as well as his power. Glory be to the name of the Lord. I bless you in Jesus' mighty name. The oil will flow ceaselessly. Your cup will overrun. I'll see you next Sunday by 8 a.m. God bless you. Call me. Join me as my partner. Join me. Let's make this happen all over the world. Let's strengthen the body of Christ and let's set fire on every believer all around the world. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen.